Hey, can we talk really quick about that thing over your left shoulder, the scorpion monster? There's like a, there's like a, a, the a love crack. We learned about is it love crack? Is it from the thing? What is it? Which the, one the, is it? The, 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 the one on the TV? Is that what you're talking about? Is it a face hugger? Yeah, it's a face hugger. Okay, sweet. That's really <laughs> sweet. Can you bring it a little closer to the camera, please? Hold on. Yes. Can we have it? I like your beats by Dre. <laughs> 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 oh my god, oh, get that away, never mind. Oh uh, yeah, my room is crawling with weird stuff. Those aren't beats by Dre, never mind. Those are, those are Rebel Alliance by Dre. Yes, yeah, it's really sweet. Rebel okay. Alliance by Dre. <laughs> oh, this is gonna look like that segment in VHS. Yeah, it's gonna yes. look like VHS. When, when I started practicing with this, this is like the first time I've actually used Skype, and that's what it felt like to me. <laughs> We've absolutely got to stage something the next time we do this. We have to do we it. Have to. We have to. We have to. Oh, oh my god. We missed the boat. Have you, have, have you guys heard of like chat roulette? That's terrifying to me. Horrifying. I will never do it. I'm so scared of that. Like, that sounds horrible. Apparently there's a lot of penises, apparently. That's all what I hear about. There. Yeah, and who wants to talk to a dude anyways? Ever. There's so much. I don't want to talk to a dude. So I don't even want to talk to you. Like pretty much. <laughs> We actually yeah. mostly communicate through other girls. Just like, will you please tell Justin that he's too close <laughs> to my right now? <laughs> yeah, uh, fr a friend of mine said he wanted to make a, a Skype horror movie, and I said that you should just stage it and do a real chat roulette thing and just have somebody come in and murder you and just record a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I've been done. I feel like there's there's like a, there's definitely like a YouTube viral of that somewhere. Yeah. That's brilliant though. Um, <laughs> but it'd be it, to be realistic, it would be really horrible because it would just be like a close up of a dick, and you just hear everything <laughs> happening off camera. <laughs> we went to Ithaca International Fantastic Film Festival. Had a um, an emphasis on. Australian exploitation. Ozploitation. So I love that. I love that phrase. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, well, I got a weird phrase with you after this. Uh, we got to see Wake and Fright, which is so <laughs> fucking awesome. And so fine. It made us stop drinking for like two weeks. <laughs> but uh, but um, that and um, and we saw a thirty-five millimeter print of Picnic at Hanging Rock, mm -hmm. yeah. which was so so like such a special thing. Have you seen um, Not Quite Hollywood, the documentary no. about exploitation? So if oh, actually, actually, I have. I have yeah. seen it. It's, it's, it's awesome. Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah it is. Yeah. It's really good. There's a lot of nudity in that doc. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah um, a lot of boobs. Oh, yeah. wait, I saw Mad Max for the first time in 35 there. I forgot about that. I went to go see Mad Max. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And then there's another one. Uh, it's not about exploitation, but uh, Machete Maidens Unleashed is like the same film, basically, but about, uh, what the hell is it? It's like Filipino uh, it's, the, yeah, exploitation. The, yeah, 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 that was pretty fun, too. Yeah. A lot of nudity in that one, too, so check that That's out. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like genre making, making movies was on sale in the Philippines, like, in the 70s. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, like, the, like the Philippines were like the Jakarta <laughs> of, like, the 70s. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> like, did you know that the last year was known as the McConaissance? <laughs> was it? <laughs> the Matthew McConaughey. Like, really? Many diverse roles. No. But Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. Oh no! I because we, saw, we did. We saw. We saw Killer Joe. Killer Joe. Yeah. He's great, in Killer uh, Joe. I, I saw Bernie and his performance is mm. amazing. And uh, neither one of us saw the Magic the, Mike the movie. But I'm sure <laughs> it's has it. Magic Mike is really good. Yeah, that's yeah. what they say. Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. I have a pretty important question. Okay. Um, Serious time. Are you, yeah, because I'm looking at your background now, and <laughs> are you looking forward to the new Evil Dead, or do you find it kind of offensive, or are you, like, what's the deal? As a diehard fan, I'm a casual fan. Like, I, like, I think Evil Dead 2 is obviously brilliant, there's something else like it, yeah. but I'm, like, not like, like, you have a very impressive thing happening here. No. Yes. Um, so what's the deal? How do you feel about it? No, I am, I am very excited for it. Um, I guess like everybody else, when they announced it, I had that knee-jerk reaction of why, you know, but uh, I think that they found a competent director, as far as I can tell, and I really like some of the things he said about the film, about how he's handling it, and um, I don't know, and then the footage so far looks pretty cool, so I think if he just... Feel like... What do you guys think? <laughs> I agree. It's just it, it, the one thing I'm a little afraid about is I feel like Cabin in the Woods parodied the new Evil Dead before it came out. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because because the, there is there is something like okay under like I understand that like the first Evil Dead is is um which by the way um one of the Coen brothers edited if I'm not mistaken which is like a really neat factoid but but uh, but like okay I understand the first Evil Dead is like it's not meant to be um funny and I'm not saying it is funny but uh, I feel like all the charm of that movie is like that like do it yourself when it was shot like it's just so inventive and and everything and I feel like by doing a glossy remake it, I got using a premise that at the time that premise was quite novel like yeah. I'm sure there was another movie with a demon in the woods but but like that was a very original premise at the time mm. but now it's like if you remake it you're kind of taking the things out of it that are so charming about it right. and you're using a premise that has been done so many fucking times. I'm not to say it can't be done good again. It's yeah. just that... Well, it's like, it's like rebooting The Matrix. It's, it's like, I mean, like in 20 years. It's just like, well, yeah, but now all the movies have bullet time. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, it's like you can't, like, like, yeah, I was trailblazing them, but now they all have it. So, yeah. Actually, that's actually, it's an even worse example because Matrix is really hard to pull off, whereas Evil Dead is super creative, but but on a technical level, isn't tough. You it's know? it's purely so. faith based because like uh, I agree with what you're saying, Justin, because I had the same problem with the the Texas Chainsaw remake, the one the Michael Bay produced one from a couple years back, because it was so glossy and not that gritty, disgusting. You know, like that's what I love about the original. It took out every single reason yes, to watch. Yes, and I, I agree. Song I agree. So what I'm hoping, this is purely faith, because I'm hoping that with the new Evil Dead, that it'll go its own way and not try to replicate what he did, because it's not going to. There's no way. There's no point in trying to recreate what Raimi did, and I hope that they know that. And I, I, you know, I think if nothing else, it would be fun. But the fact is, it's not going to take away. All the DVDs I own of Evil Dead, <laughs> I can still watch it whenever I want. You know, like it's not going to take away from the original for me. And if it's a fun movie, I'm open to it. You know, I don't get as offended by remakes as most people do. <laughs> you know, what would be really cool, and I, I literally just had this thought. It would be really cool if, um, if the Evil Dead remake made a shit ton of money, and thus it inspired a remake of Evil Dead Two. But what they tried to do, no, what they tried to do was they're like, they're like, fuck it, we're going to make it funnier. We're going to use more camera tricks. Because Evil Dead 2 used so many fucking cool camera tricks. Like when the taxidermy comes to life and the, the stop motion of his like dead girlfriend dancing on the, you yeah. know, like yeah. if you could like take that and go, no, we're going to do version fucking 2.0 of this. Mm -hmm. It would be mm -hmm. like filmmaker orgasm. Yeah. But then if that made a shit ton of money, they did a remake of Army of Darkness. <laughs> And uh, they did like a remake of Army of Darkness that was like, like fucking bigger than Lord of the Rings. Like it was just like this crazy medieval dimension, you know, that would be kind of neat. I, mm -hmm. I like your room. Um, <laughs> is this back, back right hand corner? This is it's uh, the, the girl from Evil, uh, not from, I'm from Night of the, Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Return of the Living Dead girl. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, have you seen Return of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead part three? I never saw three. I saw two, but three seems so different from the others that I didn't bother. But. It's completely different, but if you're a fan of that franchise, it's worth checking out because it's, it's certainly not a bad movie. Yeah. It's like actually like you could tell they respected it, you know, quite a bit. And uh, it's a ballsy choice to do Romeo and Juliet with <laughs> with, with a zombie comic. You know? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I'll see it eventually. I wasn't too fond of two even, and two is a lot like one you know, in weird ways, like they, you know, get like James Karen and Tom Matthews and like in it again as different characters and it's just kind of weird, but. Um, maybe that's why you'll like three though, is that it's different. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think two might've been trying to just recapture what one did poorly. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I was really impressed by what, uh, Simon Bear, the section that he wrote for VHS, the one that Swanberg yeah. directed, that was like such a like such simple, a good idea, cool idea, and it's like a new take on, on found footage that also is like hyper like aware of the time period. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, it's not like you know. I mean, to be honest, it's not really cool to bring a video camera to a party anymore. Yeah. It's like pretty uncool if you do that actually. And but if you are but Skype, everybody uses Skype. We're using it right now, you know. Like, yeah, it's brilliant. And and the way like Simon made some like surprisingly like 
surprisingly three dimensional characters and like part of an anthology. Like that, that dude clearly is like it's so sad how guilty he feels about like, yeah. what he's doing. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I, and, and but you don't know what he's doing exactly, but you know it's fucked no. up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, question for you. Is any of this stuff in the background worth a lot of money? I don't think so. Maybe it is. What's your address? What's your address? What's your address? What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to know your sleeping pattern. That's all. That's all. <laughs>